having some great conversation during this break but let's let's get into a good discussion now listen in my experience every time I turn on a television show uh, go on YouTube read a magazine article there's always large groups of black men explaining what they don't like about black women why they choose not to date or marry black women and choose every alternative other and it's interesting as I was researching for my book why we hate black women I came across a list that's actually the top 10 reasons why black men have problems dating black women. This is some of the list. It says black women make black men feel underappreciated. They're too aggressive. They're too strong and, and, and too independent. They're too masculine and want to control the relationship. They expect too much. They don't know how to cater to their man. So, Professor, as a professor and a cultural critic, I mean, are these legitimate uh, issues that these men are raising, or is it a part of the same stereotypical label that has falsely been, you know, placed on black women? I think some of them are very valid. Um, I talk to some of my, I see some of my students and the relationships that they're in and sometimes I, you know, I look at these girls and I say, you know, what's wrong with you? How can you, you can't have your cake and, you, and eat it too. There are roles that we have to play as men and women because we are too, we have to match, you know, and we have to have a balance. I think, um, <sighs> I think some of them are right. Some, some of these young girls get on my nerves. I'm not going to even lie. Yeah, I, don't, <laughs> but, I, don't, you, I don't agree with that at all. You've I, interviewed you know. countless men in your sure, book, and they're sharing sure. their stories and their testimonies about black women. What are they and saying? And 99% would agree almost carte blanche with the sort of list that you just did. See, part of the sort of trick that has been played on black women is that we get to talk about, as men, about black women's attitudes, but we never talk about our own. See, mm. see, the reality is that an attitude isn't anything onto itself. It, it really has to be sort of evaluated. Mm -hmm. And it has to be a sort of reaction to it before you even know that you have a problem with it. So the, the, the issue is that, uh, you know, the sort of anger, the shame, uh, and the way in which men categorize black women clearly is a way in which they experience women. The question is, uh, A, do we deal with it? Do we understand it? Uh, and are we working towards t to change those as opposed to just jumping on a plane and flying overseas? So, and obviously the men that, and perhaps Steve can speak to this, the answer is they don't want to deal with it. They are uh, increasingly prepared to go overseas and really uh, are leaving black women way more isolated than they've ever, ever been. So that's the real sort of issue. Not just that, you know, sisters have issues, but so do we, and we never talk about it. And the question is, are we prepared to deal with them? But, Jewel, because, because they do that, that's why we have to be strong. That's why so many black women are sure. very aggressive, want to be the man and have to, you know, want to control everything. Because, I mean, statistically, I know there's less black men to black women, sure. correct? Mm -hmm. So, you know, jail, on the down low, gay, um, or just not here. So historically we've had to play those roles the whole thing about you know mothers um, raise their girls and spoil their sons they don't we I don't know I don't know if it's something that we teach our, our sons to be um, physically strong but mentally weak you know historically well, well, hold on now. in your it's funny you mention that because typically we hear you know the same story black men are either gay they're in jail they're dead they're on drugs right. they're dating white women or they're married right. that, and so the options aren't there the numbers aren't mm -hmm. there but in your book you actually suggest that there are many more in terms of numbers professional black men than professional black women in terms of when you're looking at the financial and economic uh, income that they're actually making sure. there's more of black men yeah. so how does that play into this notion that there are no good black men out right, there? Right, right. I mean we have this sort of illusion I mean clearly just in terms of demographics we know that for example even in college and universities the ratio for black men and women is mm -hmm. clearly two to one but that uh, that might obscure the fact that we as men do better than black women at every economic level so if you're looking at the data of the the, the number of black people on fortune 500 there's way more black men than there are black women if you just look at the sports world in general we know that black men in the sports world garner way more money so clearly there's limited uh... they're not as many in numbers but in terms of means black men are doing much better than we give them credit the issue is that when we tend to do well we tend to do what we tend to take those resources outside of the black women and black family why perhaps going back to this whole perception is that black women are too domineering or too all that sort of stuff the question is and this is what we were having this heated debate on uh... during uh... the sort of break is what is men's definition of freedom 
And I think Steve can speak to this a little bit more uh, explicit, perhaps, than any of us, because that definition of freedom for, for many young men is to actually not have any drama, to not work hard. To, women have always been the ones to be long-suffering, right, mm -hmm. to, to stick through, to fight. The question is, are we preparing, and, and I, just, I wouldn't frame it the way you did, mm -hmm. are we preparing our young boys and men to be there when there's a problem, to be there when the woman gains weight because they've had their children, mm -hmm. by the way, to not have, you know, sexual relationships out of the marriage just because they have $100,000 and women are looking at them, not for even who, not, who they are, but for what they've got. So all those things, I think, are the realities of men. The question is, are we prepared as men to deal with it? Good question. Steve, when we consider this phenomenon of people traveling to Brazil, DR, and all over the world, and then you have black men who choose white women and Asian women, Latino women, in terms of establishing committed relationships, are black women even necessary anymore? From that standpoint, the answer would be no. But based on what my grandmother taught me, I could never marry anything but a black woman personally. But a lot, a lot of my friends have just, for the most part, given up. They had a different grandmother. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and to Steve's my, point... My grandmother uh, would you, kill me if I came home with anything other than black with a ring. Right. And the, the reality is, if you're talking about marriage, it's not just the issue of separation and divorce. One of the greatest phenomena that we have now is never married. So... We have, you know, black women will never have, you know, they say in terms of data, black women are in college more so now than they are in relationships. Mm -hmm. The four or eight years. That, right. So, again, the question is, are we preparing a generation of particularly, our, let's say, our college educated male? Because there's a chapter in my book uh, that deals specifically with the issue of college. Mm -hmm. Most of us, you know, I, when we went to undergrad or grad, this is when we started to have these issues where we had so much access to women, black, white, Asian, what have you. Mm -hmm. And so we, to play it forward, when we, and certainly when we get in graduate school, we're really uh, limited. So we've never dealt with privilege until we get into college. In fact, when we get in college, we start to blame those same sisters that didn't holler at us right, in high school. Right. Right. Almost, what does the rapper say? Back then you didn't know me, now I'm hot, you all up on me, right? Mm -hmm. That's the experience that professional black men feel. They say, you didn't want me then, but now I got money and I have resources, and now you want to have a holler at me. And so this idea of being a mantle man, right? We know what it means to be a trophy wife. Mm -hmm. But what does it mean, and Steve can talk about this. Steve, do you feel as if women look at you for what you got as opposed to who you are? My, I would say that my wife was more, more intrigued with the big house, the big car, the private school for the kids, more so than Andre, more so than myself. It was all about, okay, status. And... What I wanted, for me personally, was secondary to what she wanted to live like. It became a headache. But wait, hold on, hold on. Want. Steve, the question becomes, how different is that than what women in DR and Brazil want? I mean, in essence, they're giving you what you want for what they want, which is money, which gives them access right. to the house, to the car. So how are these women any different? It seems as though we have a problem dealing with that in our relationship, but we'll pay somebody you know, for that same expectation that they have. I mean, it doesn't seem to make any sense. You talked about the college sure. campus. This is where the, 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 hold on, Steve, this is where the great divide starts, right? Mm -hmm. So you have, as you say, black men have access to all types of women, black, Asian, Latino. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, black, excuse me, white women are graduating with their MRS degree, their Mrs. degree. Sure. Black women aren't. They're graduating with their BA, their BS, their MA, their PhD, but there are no relationships, unfortunately, that take place after college. Statistically, the more education, the more employment that they have, Absolutely. it widens the, the gap in terms of finding committed, you know, people in a relationship. And I'm saying the question is, and you're 100% right, but are we having co uh, conversations with men in college about their potential commitment to black women? I mean, if you ask the average 18-year-old black male, uh, are you interested in marrying a black woman, he'll look at you and say, what are you talking about? Uh, but if you ask the average 18-year-old black girl, that question of being married is already in their mind because they might think they'll never get married. So the reality is, to your point, we're not preparing young men early and often enough to answer these types of questions. You know, what, you know my son is 16 and he's in the studio. Uh, he's out there. And I had a conversation. What is your uh, uh, ideas about dating outside the race now? Why? Because I want him to struggle with that at 16, not at 26 when he has all these options. But I think you guys are being light on the women. Women, young women are not being trained to be in relationships with black men either. You know, unless the black man has the car, the house, mm. and the money. They're not, you know, that, like I said, I, I, speak, I, I, appreciate I, that thing. I speak to these students all the time. And I listen to, I have 
male students and female students and I listen to these arguments and I listen to them battling each other and it's all about well, the girls are like well what are you going to do for me what are you going to do when you graduate I admit with my husband you know once we graduated when are you going to buy me a house that you was know, you that That's was you. me mm. I had to flip the script on myself and realize you know when are we going to buy a house together how are we going to build this together you know what hold that thought we have to take another quick commercial break and we'll pick up right after this break now tracy when you hear you know responses like this i mean mm -hmm. what hope is there for black women when you consider the fact that you mentioned earlier black men are gay or dead and drugs in jail i mean can black male female relationships be salvaged when the options look like they're not there for black women? Well, I guess the answer for black women is white men after the conversation we just had today because wow. it's Decipher just, that. What do you mean by that? <laughs> just like I said, I guess white men, if, if, you know, what Steve said, he is completely given up on relationships with black women. So if you're saying that to me, well, what is my other option? Sure. You know, I'm not gonna. I'm not that type of person who I'm gonna live the rest of my life alone. Period. So if I have to go to a white man, if you want to stay home, if you want to stay home and watch TV with you, read the newspaper with you, and go to the corner store with you, and answer. And Steve, yourself, I want somebody to party with me, like you say you party. But I want to make sure it's the same person, so I know somebody has my well, back. She wants somebody that <laughs> you know? loves you, right? Right. That's I want the somebody who loves me, but I want to have fun. No, no, no. With, but I'm saying. Why is if that's not the most important thing? Because mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, you're not in love with anybody. No. But no, yourself, love right? Love but yourself. Yes, right? Sir. And so, I mean, so, so that's what I'm saying. Me. You can't keep black women, are, the expectation shouldn't be that you do all these other things because at the end of the day, you want somebody to love you. And loving you doesn't that's mean these other things. So. But you, no, no, no. I'm happy partying. And there's thousands of us down here partying like rock stars. And the life that you're talking about, the black women and the black men being married, it needs to happen, but I'm not contributing. I did my part, and I'm out. Well, I guess that pretty much sums it up. Listen, we only have a couple minutes before this show's over. Tell us about the projects you're working on. I think you have an organization uh, for sure. black men. Tell us about that. What are you doing? Well, not just for black men. It's called the Renaissance Male Project. Okay. And literally, the conversation we've been having today, hopefully, you know, mm -hmm. proves the sort of point that we have an opportunity, if not a responsibility to be raised in generations of boys to deal with some of these complicated issues of not just oppression but privilege. We just have not prepared our young men to talk honestly about issues of masculinity, about sexuality, about pornography, about prostitution, so that when we deal with these issues, it's after the fact when men are in their 40s or the 50s and 60s and have been through divorce and have had uh, legions of fractured relationships and wounds that you know, ha take a lot of work to be dealt with. So, our effort is to somehow try to uh, deal with this proactively and not reactively. Before we close the show, I want to give each of you an opportunity to give your final thoughts. Let's start with you, Steve, uh, since you are on the phone. What, what final comments do you have to say in 30 seconds or less regarding this entire experience of black men traveling overseas? Um, the phenomenon of black men traveling overseas is going to continue because it's like going to the fantasy island. You can't beat it. You can't compete with it. There's no knock against sisters back home. But it's just no comparison. It's just fantasy island. It's like good to be LeBron James every day, if you want to use that comparison. You walk into a club, you're an American, everybody loves you. You walk into a restaurant, you're American, everybody loves you. And there's no woman, you just can't, you can, LeBron can point you to the audience and get anybody out of the stands. I can do the same. When I walk into a club, I can pick any one, two, three people, and it's a done deal, no questions asked. And that's, I mean, it's not a bad life. Tracy, follow up, 30 seconds. You know, I, I sort of feel sorry for Steve. I know he's having his uh, ball and everything, but I just sort of feel sorry for him because I, I think in the end, after all the parting's over, you know, he's going to want somebody to love him too as you get old because I'm sorry, it only works for so long. And, um, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's sure, just, we <laughs> have 10 seconds ago, there are thousands, tens of thousands of black men watching now what message do you want to leave them with? As opposed to being LeBron James, uh, be like our President Barack Obama. Mm. If you go overseas and want people to see you for status and esteem, esteem, make it be based upon your substance. Make it be based upon your message, mm -hmm. right? And that's the same type of recognition 
and reverence men can get that's not based upon sex but on substance. I want to thank you all for being on the show, uh, Professor Williams, oh. Jewel Woods, Steve. That is our show. Tune in next week for another edition of the Relationships Expert Show.